Welcome to the Business Growth Accelerator Show. Thank you so much for joining. Our primary goal here is to help you as an entrepreneur to grow your business fast with as little resource as possible. We talk about everything from smart digital marketing skills and business strategy to motivation and soft skills, top interviews with industry leaders to inspire and give you the skills to grow your business. I'm your host, Pierre Muller. Now let's jump in. Hello, everyone. Uh, good to have you back. Uh, our special guest today is Stan Cherenko. Now, he's incorporated multiple companies for clients worldwide. He was in charge of mergers and acquisitions. He moved from Europe to the US and he started all from scratch and he's now offering marketing consulting and coaching for entrepreneurs. Stan, we're really delighted to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Stan, now just to, just to kick us off, I mean, we'd love to hear your, your backstory and really the path which led up to where you are today. You know, you wrote that it uh, took 20 years for you to figure out your peak performance area. I think I read that on your website. Uh, so just please tell us anything about your journey, about your story, your backstory, and really what you learned um, on the way to where you are today. So imagine, like, um, I was born in a, a communist country where everyone is equal, nobody has anything. And, you know, like, uh, the mindset there is uh, be like everybody. Then uh, my parents were actually Germans, and when the iron curtain fall we moved and um, we were immigrants and it's it's the funny thing is like in um, soviet union we were germans and nazis who actually were in charge of the second world war when we moved to germany actually back home we were russians <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> um my parents had to work and uh, immediately and um you know that uh, you were or I was raised in a low level family, if you put it like that way. And uh, money was always an issue, always. And I was the first from our big family to graduate from university. And I thought like, yes, now I can do that. Maybe. And <laughs> yeah. And you know, like, it turns out it's not the case. No, <laughs> not the case at all. And um I said no to actually every offer I got. And uh, when my um, colleagues from university started their jobs uh, with three and a half K uh, net euro, which is like, was actually good and more, I said no to everything and started with 1.5 thousand euros per month. Hmm. But I started with an entrepreneur, uh, with a self-made multimillionaire, and uh, our agreement was, I, I will build for him while he teach me. Okay. And it took me quite a lot. Um, oh, we've been so to, through so many things. We have been robbed in, in uh, Italy. Mm. Um, we had like travels all over the world. Oh, that's a different story. But it took literally 20 years to uh, have a click here. And said, okay, actually, um, I am the author of my life. Nobody else. Nobody else is in charge and um, will pay me, me more, one dime, one cent, one dollar, whatever it is. Nobody. Myself only. And um, I have to be the best salesman. Um, we are all in one form in sales or another. Yeah. And... Um, you have to see sales as a, not a sales. Of course, everybody, when we're uh, talking about sales, we think about hard sales uh, when somebody was really hard on us. But it's not, a, it's not, it's not sales. That's uh, Sales is a kind of uh, relationship building and persuasion. Look at the children. When they want something, they will get it. Yes. <laughs> sales. Uh, look at your friends. Convince them convince them to um, do something. So play a certain game and so on. That's sales. Mm. Uh, a leader who decides uh, which direction to go, that's sales. Right. And we have to be the best salespeople in order to be successful. Nobody is in charge for, uh, nobody will sell my services to anybody. Yes. I can build a relationship with my clients so they refer and sell for me. Yes, but that, that's again sales. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's that's why it took me 20 years to get a click here and said like, mm -hmm. okay, I have to concentrate more on um, tool set mindset and skill set and skill set is uh, like sales, a lot of sales. Yeah. That's why yeah. I decided, said, okay, I learned a lot in Europe. I've um, In certain areas, my name was big uh, because I negotiated with multinational companies. Uh, we uh, supplied a lot of power plants, uh, refineries, and, um, you know, like, you know, people. And again, you have a sales team, you have... Uh, a consultant, you have lawyers and so on. Yeah, you just delegate. But then who is the best? Um, oh, one, one more thing. Our, our uh, main competitor, one of the competitors um, was uh, an American company and 55% of their turnover was done by after sales. Hmm. So they had like project sales and what's happening after the project establishment it was 55 percent of their revenue wow. sure. and that was again uh one of the points where i said like okay let's go to a country where sales entrepreneurship and marketing is a big thing hmm. that's how i ended up here in the states and uh for the first two years nobody wouldn't even listen you know, they do not accept any track record you had in Europe on, or Asia or wherever. Nobody cares. Show me what you've done here. Yes. So you start literally from scratch. You're nobody here. Nobody gives you a reference. I had like many references. Nobody cares. Wow. So that was a big issue. And oh. it's a nice one as well to learn to say, okay, now I know it. Yeah. Yeah, just almost uh, face the music and take it from there and start building, you know, without expecting something different, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and the language language you speak is, uh, and I do not refer to English language. I mean, uh, the language, the persuasive language you speak is very important. Mm -hmm. Once I have built, um, I did services for free to certain companies yeah. to get yeah. in the door. And once they see that actually what I'm saying is working, mm. they start to listen. Mm. Yeah. And on the on the on this journey, you learn to talk and speak the different language, mm. Mm. body language, uh, emphasizing, mm. mimic, uh, your certainty, and this language is very important for entrepreneurs worldwide. Mm. Yeah. Sure. No, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for that story. I think there's so many things that you know entrepreneurs can take from it. I think, firstly, I love just um, just your willingness to start off with less um, and put yourself in a learning situation initially, but then also the move to the US. I mean, that's a that's a big move. And again, you're sort of intentionally putting yourself in a learning situation where you can where you can sort of you can you can improve and you can learn. Uh, and also, yeah, I love love what you say about sales. You know, I think that's that's so important. It's I think sometimes there's a there's a bit of a stigma to sales, but at the end of the day, uh, I think someone said you're almost doing a disservice to the world if you're not offering your your gift and your service and your product because we're solving problems as entrepreneurs. Um, and you're almost doing a disservice to the world if you're not putting that service and products in front of them. So, um, so no, thanks thanks for sharing that story. And I, I think also a good um, inspiration perhaps for, for young entrepreneurs where they have new businesses and they might not have a track record yet. Uh, I think a great example, as you said, to go out there and do do work for free and you know, get some testimonials, you know, get get that proof of concept, and then sort of start building from there. That's right. Get get in the door, get in a corridor, and opportunities will will open. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's fantastic. So now let's go to you. Your um, I mean, you talked about you know your mindset, tool set, and skill set sort of framework. So let's talk about that for a moment. You know, let's start with mindset. I think that's something that I want to park on for for a moment. So let's let's talk about mindset. So what what in your opinion, what does a healthy mindset or a belief system look like for an entrepreneur? Uh, it's quite. Um, I would compare it to, with an athlete. Imagine an athlete who uh, jumps certain you know like uh, who jumps high yeah and, and he knows his skills 
And while going around um, with friends, everybody said like, ha, you can't jump that high. And he knows exactly how high he can jump without touching uh, the wall from the distance. He knows exactly how to accelerate, when to jump and how to climb over the wall. That's his programming, his operational system, which is um, built while uh, during training. Mm. The same goes for mindset in a business. You see an opportunity on the table and if your uh, mindset is not trained, you will not see the opportunity. Mm. You know, how many, how many business plans were on my table? Like over hundreds. And I said maybe to only 2% yes. Mm. Back in the days, I had a different mindset. It was a corporate mindset, meaning what's the return on investment? How fast can I get it? Uh, how can we scale? If it goes wrong, how can we uh, merge it within a company, uh, use synergies? As an entrepreneur, you should have actually a different mindset and said like, okay, that's an awesome opportunity. I can't cover that, 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 and that. But I know this person, this person, this person, this person. And they will see, say yes, because I have a solid track record with them. Mm. And you, your operational system, your network uh, is your mindset. You know exactly if you can do it or not. How far can you throw the stone? Mm. You know exactly before you actually throw it. Okay, yeah. it, it varies. It's definitely, it varies. But it uh, varies not in kilometers. It mm. varies only in, in meters or centimeters. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, So you program yourself, uh, but the programming is not reading. The programming is only by doing. Okay. Actions. Actions. Um, when you lay down under uh, on a bench and they put 200 kilograms on a bench, you won't leave it. Mm. You know exactly. When yeah. you never train, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you train yourself, your mindset with doing. That's why it is very important to have um, friends who can guide you. And, um, you know, like we have a mastermind uh, with, um, I formed a mastermind here mm -hmm. with uh, business owners. Everybody has an own business, but frameworks are the same. Okay. One is a roofer, another one is a doctor, uh, third one is a lawyer. Um, yeah, but frameworks are the same. And we discuss opportunities. Okay. We discuss uh, possibilities. Okay. Uh, and if uh, somebody has a problem which he can't solve because of his operational system, we have in our masterminds people who solve it. Okay. And it's quite, quite easy to see. You know, like okay. if you face, if you come to doctor and um, you have like blue eyes, swollen eyes, and this doctor is good, they will just look you in the eyes and saw exactly what's happening with you. Mm. Same goes with mindset. So if the opportunity knocks on the door, you will see, okay, this opportunity is great. I just have to tweak here and here and I can make money. Yeah. It all comes from experience. So at the young age, you have to try as much as possible. Hmm. File, file fast and file, file forward. And forward, only forward. Yeah. In, in, in Kazakhian language, um, I was born in Kazakhstan. Now it's a Kazakhstan. Back in the days, it was the Soviet Union. They, they joke and said, like, we don't have the word uh, back. We just have the word forward. And if you need to go backwards, you just turn around and go forward. <laughs> okay. I like that. <laughs> Always forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's a good mindset to have. <laughs> All right. So what I hear from you in terms of mindset, there are two things that sort of really stands out. It's, you know, take, take a lot of opportunities and almost train yourself, you know, see where, you, where your strengths are so that you can serve in that way. And then you also talk about network. That's so important because, I mean, our... Our, our, we have our limits and we have, you know, the, we have our uncertainties. And I think it's so important to surround ourselves with people who are like-minded, who are entrepreneurs, who are, you know, hopeful for the future, and then to bounce ideas off. And I think that can, that can really spark ideas when we feel stuck, uh, sort of sitting in our, in our business and, and you know, uh, not, not knowing where to go. So I think that's, that's quite valuable.
another thing I would add here. I met another um, uh, very successful business person and I couldn't realize why. Okay, first of all, he was successful. Second one, I didn't see anything what would make him special. Nothing. But his team was the one of the best. Okay. And I couldn't realize why do they don't go solo? You know, like working under a second fiddle. Mm. And then when a problem occur, I saw where his first, uh, why he's playing the first fiddle. Uh, he, he, while solving solutions or finding solutions, he found, he didn't find any solution by himself, but he was certain that certain that when people come into uh, office and had like a huge meeting and everybody was freaking out, he calmed everybody that down, motivated them. They came out and come, come back with a solution. That was okay. his strength. So sometimes our unique strengths are not related to business at all. Hmm. And people think that they have to have those strengths to succeed. No, it's not. Sometimes to be a good speaker, to be calm, to be an introvert, is a, it's your strength. Use it. Mm. Hmm. I also like that because I think as entrepreneurs, we often feel like we, we've got to have all the skills. You know, We have to be good in HR and good in finance and good in operations and good in marketing. Uh, and we typically, we're problem solvers, so we want to do everything ourselves. But again, so important, as you say, to play to our strength. And then surround ourselves with uh, with a strong team, and I think that's a, that's a wonderful reminder uh, yeah. and a wonderful story about that. So, and, and tell me, um, you know, I think sometimes it's so easy for entrepreneurs to get uh, distracted. You know, um, what what would you say is the best way for entrepreneurs to to keep our minds focused and sharp, and and not to get distracted? You know, by the daily running of the business and, and you know, putting out all the fires. You know, what's the best way to sort of stay focused and sharp? Uh, and not get distracted. Uh, that's good that you, you brought up the fire word. Um, there is a big difference between businessman and a firefighter. A firefighter puts out a fire. He's good at it. He pre uh, but a businessman prevents fire. Mm. At the beginning, you have to be faster than the train. You have to work more than the train. We recently heard that in the news that this evergreen stuck in Swiss Canal. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah. to start to start this ship, the propeller, the rotator, um, it uses one hundred percent or one hundred ten percent of the strength just to get the first inches and centimeters out to move. Yeah, but once you get your cruising speed. You use only like 20, 30 percent of your engine power. Mm, mm. So same goes for people. At the beginning, you have to work overtime at your full capacity to start the big, huge train to move. To in order to have that, you need a journal and a heart reminder. Really, heart reminder. Never forget why you actually started. Second, uh, you have to remind yourself uh, each day and each week uh, which direction to go. And the third uh, or the, uh, the other side, it's like on a daily basis and another one when problems occur. So what I do and what I suggest a lot of people to do is um, having a journal and at the beginning of the journal, you write down your main goals for five years. You know, like everybody does it and forget it mm. or looks once in a while. But every day, literally every day when you wake up, use one page and write down your five goals. You remind yourself every day what you have to do, mm. what you have to do. You brainwash yourself on that frequency and you stick to that every single day so when this um this additional part is your time management so people forget and get distracted because 
the uh, their uh, time management breaks down. It's planned, it's well planned, but it's not bulletproof or interruption proof, not bulletproof. Proof, proof is hard, interruption proof. Somebody calls you and say like, hey, or my wife called me, our car, car is has broken down. Yeah. So you drop everything, of course, that's literally important. You go there and your time schedule is gone. Mm -hmm. The whole day, the whole week, probably whole month. So what, first of all, reminding yourself why, write it down and remind yourself. Second part is uh, planning. Plan in blocks. Don't over plan your week. Don't under plan your life. Hmm. Plan in blocks. So I have like one, one and a half, like a tuition in, in a universities, blocks with one and a half hours. It's blocks for two hours, but it's uh, one and a half hour. Okay. So transition time, 15 minutes. Very important. Transition times are important. Otherwise you don't change. Uh, yeah. uh, multitasking is not working. So I came into the door on, on my office, sit me down and transition time. So that was, my family was here. I'm now here. What do I have to do? Open my schedule. Okay. Brainwashed myself. Let's start. If something occurs, I can exchange this time block with a different one. Mm. Move a bit. Mm. I have a half an hour on each time block uh, interruption time. I can okay. perform faster. I can perform long, uh, longer or uh, I have to squeeze a bit. I have time. Mm. That... Uh, when your your day is in um, blocked or your whole week is blocked in uh, blocks, block block, mm -hmm. uh, it's easier to uh, build another puzzle. Mm. You won't freak out. Your whole schedule won't break down. Yeah. And first part, you remind yourself, okay, that's my that's my compass. That's my true north. I have to to go here. Mm. That's very interesting. So, so, so that reminders, do you usually do that every morning and then you sort of run your day from there? Yeah, it's a reminder. You, Our brain, great inventors, literally awesome invest, inventors. Um, a lot of them uh, had a major breakthrough in um, kind of a dream state. So where... They were thinking of something while sleeping and so on. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, and why? Because they thought only about that specific topic all that time. Mm. When you remind yourself and write it down, those five things you need to achieve in your life for the next five years, just five. Five is easy to remember. We have five mm. fingers you force yourself to think of that over and over and over again new solutions come up you put uh, another filter on your eyes and when you watch information you see pieces of information which you can ease, uh, use to grow your business mm. you know that's the operational system i was referring to mm. A bit earlier yeah sure i like that because uh, as you say i mean if we just write them down and we don't revisit them often it's so easy to forget them and get distracted you know by by all the things we have to do as entrepreneurs but it's really a way of training our brain and it's amazing how i uh, think uh, we've got something called a reticular you know ras reticular outlating art, system or something I can't remember the exact words but it's what we what you put in front of us our brains almost start to create the solutions and find the solutions because we're actually thinking about it uh, well if it's not front of mind you know uh, we wouldn't have seen that opportunity that's right in front of us so i really like that you know to sort of revisit that uh, every morning and then in terms of the time management i also like that blocks now so just to clarify so you said it's sort of a uh, two hours and you've got a 15 minutes transition and then you also allow 30 minutes for uh, disruptions. I think that's an interesting one because that's 
Uh, I mean, disruptions will occur. And then the question is how to deal with that. So just unpack that again. So let's say, you know, a disruption comes your way. Do you then sort of actively think, you know, should I trade this time block for something else? And if you don't have a disruption, you just work longer on that same task in that block. Is that is that sort of how you how you do it? Yes. And I have an, a national. It's a bigger part of, of um, it's not. Um, I um, like 15 years ago. I've read the book um, Getting Things Done by David Allen. I recommend this one. Yeah. It's very hard uh, to understand. But um, his major, major uh, thing, um, which I used as one of uh, why I used that kind of, of, of um, uh, time management for myself, is to organizing everything when it comes in. Mm. So I've got an email. Urgent, urgent. Okay. You know, you know exactly urgent. Mm. <laughs> so this email comes in. I do not do it straight away. I'm working now on something which is uh, very important. Yeah. I have to go one step back again. Uh, you, everybody knows this quadrant with uh, urgent and important, urgent, not important, uh, urgent, not important, uh, important, but not urgent and not urgent, not important. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. important, but not urgent. It's actually here. Uh, important, but not urgent is our life. Mm. Health. Is it important? Yes. Is it urgent? No, I can drink uh, a coffee with some chocolate right now. That's okay. Mm. But when you do it constantly, then it's important, urgent, and it's too late. Yeah. Well, for the business, you have to spend the most of the time in that quadrant, which is important, but not urgent. Mm. Your children, are they important? Yes. Are they urgent? No, they can stay for five minutes outside and watch a bit more of the cartoons. Mm. Yes, but what will happen in two years? Yeah. So yeah. the input, everything. Okay, sales, we refer to sales funnel, what's on the top. In information, it's uh, in our performance is again the funnel on the top is too much on on uh, the button are our results. We have to filter them out to warm the, up the leads in in sales. We have to filter them out. So you put I have a um, all folder A to Z. Um, every information which I use or I need, it will go to A to Z. So I've received a marketing idea. So it could be only under I as idea or under M as marketing. Okay. Two places to look and I found, I, I have found it. So I'm organized. When it comes in, um, I have a folder, which is like quick tasks okay. for today, for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's like a sand, you know, you put the brick stones first, then the sand, then the yeah. water. You remember yeah. this yeah, yeah, yeah. thing? So the sand is here in the folder, okay. but I concentrate on the blocks. Mm. That's why blocking, time blocking, blocks which build your future, your life, sand, quick tasks, I have interruptions, and nothing will happen with sand. Sand is going through the fingers, nothing will happen. It's not mm. urgent. Mm. It's not important. Mm. Yes, people tend to over exaggerate everything yeah. yes <laughs> okay so, no, that's that's quite helpful yeah that's that's why i can fill those blocks or transitions or 30 minutes with quick tasks or i just turn off and say it's time just to go out for 15 minutes and recharge hmm. yeah yeah I, I like hope that. I answered your, your question. Oh, totally. And I guess it comes back to intentionality to really think about what are those big things, the important things in our lives. There's business and there's family and there's kids and there's our health. And it's so important to put those big blocks in place first and plan for them. Because, uh, I mean, if the day just starts and we just run through it, we're not going to get to those things. So important to put those big blocks in time. Um, and then, yeah, I like those quick actions, the things that we have to, you know, get, get done quickly. So I think that uh, makes it nice and practical. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. I had um, a meeting 10 years ago with, um, I think he's a billionaire right now. <laughs> and we had a small chat and we talked about that and that and that. And I had, I, I'm a natural um, information soaker. I, mm. When I heard it, I, I keep it. Yeah. 
and he's like so much useless information <laughs> i was like okay let's think about that so we can concentrate and keep our focus on useless stuff and yeah. useless information or we can build our lives yeah and it's such an important skill eh? because we are we are bombarded with information um, on the internet and social media and so on and it's it's so important that we choose what goes in eh? and what what we filter out because our our capacity is limited and we need to get get the good stuff in and we need to block out the stuff that's uh, that's not helping for us absolutely Stan, uh, thanks for that. Let's uh, we talked about mindset a bit, and you touched uh, on in terms of skill set. You touched a little bit on time management, uh, which which is great. Let's just touch on strategic thinking, and I know it's also something that um, that you sort of focus on and help entrepreneurs with. My question to you is: Can strategic thinking be learned? Uh, is it a learned skill, or is that something one would rather need to partner up with a business coach to help you with that bigger picture strategic uh, type of thinking for your business? It depends on a person. <laughs> it depends on a person. Um, sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. Uh, so, um, who, uh, okay, this word strategy comes actually from military. We are all familiar. And one of the best um, uh, military strategies was Sun Tzu, yeah. the Chinese, Chinese uh, general. Yeah. Uh, you know, like men read it a lot and um, you can implement a lot of things in, in business, uh, what he wrote. And that these are actually only small wisdoms, uh, easy to read and so on. And um, he, for instance, um, had generals under, uh, he could learn, but he learned it by himself, by himself. Mm. But uh, another people can't. It's not that bad. Um, the definition of business strategy or marketing strategy, that's what makes people freak out. Everybody thinks of something different. So we have to find a common definition. So strategy is actually um, nothing more or less as um, a game plan. Yeah. Tactics are the implementation, are the instruments to use to get from A to Z. So you plan your road trip and you say like, okay, today I visit this city, next I have spent my night here. That's a strategy. No. Tactics no. is, okay, I need a car, so I drive. I use these instruments. And in terms of business, you need to know where you're heading. So you have to, first of all, you have to test everything you have to test. You have to be sure that the market is there for your product or service. Once you are, sh you are sure that people will buy from you, then you develop a strategy. Strategy meaning, okay, I need, um, that's my ideal client. How? Uh, that's the uh, attributes of my ideal client, like 20 to 40 years old, uh, that household income uh, lives in uh, Los Angeles area in, and so on and so on. And uh, I can sell to them. Once I have enough data, I can move and project uh, my Facebook ads to another city and start targeting them. That's the strategy I develop. Mm -hmm. Point by point, I reach this level, then the next level, then the next level. And um, why you need a business coach for that is to have a fresh pair of eyes to guide you through. Um, it's like a lot of entrepreneurs think of Elon Musk and would like to build um, Falcon X on their own mm. without having any experience. That's why they fail. The first step is not to build a, uh, no. to build something smaller. Mm. They, that's why they need a coach. And um, if you see it like that again in the athlete world, Everybody has a coach, not because he's better. Mm. No, every coach of the best athlete is actually not athlete at all. Mm. Why? Accountability, consistency, performance. Mm. You can't, uh, we tend to uh, forget that. 
not everybody is um, self-organized and hold themselves accountable. No, yeah. we have. I don't. I don't have a coach right now, but I. We did something differently. I referred to a mastermind. Remember at the beginning. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, five people of us put five grand on the table and said that who didn't achieve their goals, we've wrote them down, yeah. we'll lose it. Okay. <laughs> and it goes to different. Okay. So let's okay. say four will uh, not achieve and one will achieve from you just earned 20 grand. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's good motivation. So if everybody achieves it, everybody will get the premium back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a motivation. Yes. It's fun, but yeah. it's accountability. Yes. Yeah. Find accountability partner. Hmm. Don't call him business coach. Yeah. Not everybody yeah. is like a business coach. Yeah. It's more, it's more about consistency, accountability and performance. Yeah. I like that, you know, because I think sometimes the idea is that a business coach must be this senior partner with all the answers to all the questions. But I think what I like about a mastermind is you have different skill sets and you have different backgrounds and you have different frames of mind. And, and it's sort of, sort of tag teaming. I guess it's more of a peer to peer type of relationship group than where it's this sort of, um, this mentor where the mentor must have all the answers, you know, to all the questions kind of thing. That's right. No. Okay. No, I really like that. Thanks for that. Stan, tell us, um, I mean, we're sort of coming closer to the end. I mean, what, what is on Stan's mind? What's the biggest thing on your mind at the moment, you know, for, for the year ahead, you know, where you see uh, maybe the marketing industry going, you know, where obviously it's been a tough, you know, sort of year or two for entrepreneurs. But what's the biggest thing on your mind uh, when it comes to the year ahead or marketing or your business? What, what sort of, yeah, what, what's sort of that one biggest thing? I'm, I'm living in kind of a schizophrenia right now. <laughs> 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 one part of, of a brain, which is a strategic one, it's a bigger one, the logical one. I think it's like that. Uh, thinks about my uh, marketing and consulting agency. Another thing thinks about uh, coaching business. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, first of all, what I'm thinking right now is to offer a um, do it yourself solution for entrepreneurs, small businesses who can't hire or do not want to hire a marketing agency. Um, another thing is there are too many marketing agencies right now. Um, two years ago, it was a big thing to start dropshipping. Everybody was in dropshipping and you, you had like Shopify stores all over around who were targeting you with useless ads. And uh, you had to wait for four weeks to get uh, your product from AliExpress. Yeah, you remember that. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of them uh, went out of business and selling courses how to run um, a marketing agency. Mm. And okay, some are great in, uh, in uh, doing Facebook ads. They learned on the way. Yes, good. But marketing is not uh, only uh, paid ads. No. Marketing starts how you greet your employee, how your employee picks up the phone and answers and marketing will um, is is not ending to say happy birthday to your client. Mm. That's all marketing. And uh, so, by doing it yourself, it's a huge program which I develop right now to uh, help entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses, even middle mid-sized businesses, to understand the framework of marketing, mm. give them tools. They can use tools are changing all oh, every two days you know like a new software come up uh, something different come up algorithm change and so on but they are evergreen stuff relationships yeah. colors we are all psychology uh be, being see we know what's uh colors uh are catching our eyes you you i i I, um, I end up on a website and I see immediately if this website was done properly or not. Mm. If they have like three colors maximum and two supporting, okay, this uh, agency was good. But if they have like five, six, seven colors mm. and uh, 
I'm a man, not a woman. Women, you know, like they have like uh, five different names for rat. For me, it's everything rat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I say, okay, this rat is different to this rat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so framework. Um, in terms of marketing, what's coming up, we will face more shift towards online. Definitely. The world have changed. We have this uh, small talk that Zoom costs right now more. Uh, the whole company is uh, evaluated more than five biggest airlines. Yeah. Why? Because Zoom is used everywhere. And um, so we will shift online, definitely. One of my clients is a carpenter and a roof, um, flooring company. And we developed a drop shipping store for him. And he scaled. He scaled his business um, nice. for people, you know, like... They uh, now drop shipping um, carpets and laminate direct from manufacturer to uh, to clients. Mm. So shift online, shift digitally. Uh, in the industry I've worked with, they had only exhibitions. The best uh, sales or the biggest contract were signed on exhibitions. Mm. It's gone. It's yeah. gone. Who who knows if it returns and if in what. Uh, kind of a thing yeah so maybe florida is open but invite guests from uh china right now or from south africa mm -hmm. uh, good luck mm -hmm. yeah so uh, it's changed so virtual stuff will vr will be a big thing so maybe we will have virtual um uh, not maybe it's definitely will be the case we will have virtual um exhibitions yeah so transfer your knowledge from what you know into digital that yeah. will be the big thing yeah even seo has changed it, search engine optimization yeah so before that it was more logical now you have to have uh, on, on your website some kind of stuff where you can uh, use as a voice search mm. siri uh alexa alexa where's the next uh, call the next uh, available roofing company or whatever yeah so we all have to change from physical to digital right now. That's a big yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's been such a big shift very, very fast. And I think for maybe for a lot of business owners, they just wait for that day where everything goes back to, you know, the, the way it was in the past. But you know, I don't think that's going to be the case. You know, I think the world is, is going to be different. It doesn't mean every single brick and mortar business must now sell online courses, but it's, it's just that change in mindset, as you say, to say, look, I've, I've sold from my brick and mortar or I've relied on exhibitions. How can I embrace this online world and get myself out there and, and, and just embrace it, you know, and, and make use of those channel, channels? That's right. Great. Stan, thank you so much. I mean, finally, please tell us, um, just tell us, tell our audience where they can, uh, where they can find you, where they can have a look at what you are busy with. So I invite everybody to uh, follow my Instagram account, which is Stan Cherenko. Quite easy. Yeah. As Arnold Schwarzenegger used to say, uh, when I'm famous, everybody can spell my name. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we will put it in the show notes just to make sure everyone gets that. <laughs> yeah. Get the spelling. <laughs> so the spelling is different. Yeah. But uh, that's my name. And uh, I um, ev encourage everybody to treat his name as a legacy, uh, even if they have a, think they have a bad one. It's uh, not the case. Yeah, it comes from all the knowledge for our, of our fathers is in your name. Yeah. And um, just to give me a follow and stick around and see what's uh, what kind of information and uh, tips I'm putting out. I think a lot of people, I receive like five, um, 10 uh, DMs a day just to say thank you. Oh. That uh, it helps. Just one idea was the last drop to start something. Yeah. So, and it gives me motivation to move on. So kindly, kindly visit my Instagram page and follow. That's great. Stan, thank you again so much for the value that you delivered today and all the advice. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, for our audience, you. uh, make sure to, you know, have a look at the URLs, which we will post uh, in the show notes. Uh, thank you again for joining us today and we'll see all of you next time. Cheers.
If you want to ensure that you get free access to the entire series of content and interviews, plus more tips, tools, and tricks to grow your business, be sure to join our free Facebook group, Get More Customers. You'll find a link in the description or show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like, love button, depending on which platform you use. This will really help us to get this message out to more entrepreneurs. We would also love to hear from you, so please engage with us and reply. What business are you in or which speakers would you love to hear on the show? See you next time. Cheers.